chapter 2, verse 42 to 47. The context of this scripture is uh, soon after Christ ascended, he asked his disciples to go to Jerusalem and wait. And as you begin to read the book of Acts, which I encouraged you last Sunday to read the whole of, the whole of it, you realize that um, Acts starts right after Christ has ascended and the disciples are in Jerusalem waiting for the helper whom Christ promised to send. And then soon after that, um, there came the day of Pentecost and the Holy Spirit came upon the apostles. And uh, this is the helper that Christ promised to send to help the, the disciples to continue the task. One as you Remember, at the end of Matthew uh, chapter 28, Jesus Christ char charges his disciples to go and preach in all corners of the earth, uh, baptizing people and teaching them. So this is the helper coming. And soon after, her, uh, after that, Peter started preaching. And as you get to verse 41 of Acts chapter 2, you see that after P Peter had given a discourse of the gospel, 3,000 people or 3,000 souls were added to the number. One as a few. And then after that is when these guys continued the tradition of the church of coming together. And that is what we read in uh, verse 42 to 47. One as a few. So, I want us to talk today about fellowship. This word in the Bible, fellowship, this word, biblically, it comes from a Greek word called koinonia. And the usage of this word in, in Greek, it is to have something in common. One has a few. Because if you look at uh, some of the uses, they would uh, talk about we have one mother in common. Or we have a pass or a circle somewhere we share. So fellowship is to hold something together or to have something in common together. It's a word, it's a word that points to an interdependent relationship. So koinonia in the New Testament is used about 19 times and is sometimes translated as contribution and sometimes translated as sharing and sometimes translated as participation. In verse 42, Acts 2, verse 42 to 47, 
you will see the meaning of contribution uh, the meaning of sharing and the meaning of participation you will see all those definitions that have been used as, uh, uh, in different parts of the scripture uh, using the word koinonia so fellowship is not just being together but it is also doing together but some of us we only fulfill the, the being part but we don't engage in the doing part we be, we we come together we become together we 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 are present together like right now we are present together so some of us stop at being there they just be there like in church they are just here right yeah some of you you are just members you just want to appear but you don't want to do you are not doing you are just there even in the groups you could be there but you are just there you are just there in church you are just there but you do not do so you have not fulfilled you have not completed fellowship until there is doing together one has few fellowship is not just being together it's also doing together what has it been and doing what doing god's will together hallelujah fellowship is doing god's will together fellowship begins from the inside of a believer as soon as the holy spirit comes in what has it been fellowship begins from the inside of a believer as soon as the holy spirit comes and, and when does the holy spirit comes into a believer as soon as they are saved because christ told the, the disciples i'm going but i'm sending the helper one as a few he is the helper the counselor he is the you know helper he helps you he is coming and in romans we see that he even prays for us when we cannot put our prayers in words he, he prays for us he is the helper is the counselor counselor in the bible is not uh, just offering counsel counselor in the bible is more of a teacher who is fully involved in the life of the student they worked with the student one as a few so so that is why when a belief, when a person gets saved a wrong takatifu anakuja kuishi ndani yake bwana asifiwe so that he can be fully involved in the life of the believer teaching guiding leading showing the way and all sorts of things that are involved in in relationships so fellowship uh, fellowship begins from the inside by the time you see a person committed to working together with others by the time you see a person committed in church or in fellowship it is because it has started within in upheld by the holy spirit one as if you so i want us to see some of the things um, about these believers in acts chapter 2 verse 42 and remember those uses of koinonia I, i i told you that sometimes in the new testament koinonia means contribution sometimes it means sharing sometimes it means participation when you see these believers in acts chapter 2 verse 42 to 47 we see all the three contribution sharing and participation we see all the three in them for for a start in in regards to contribution look at verse 45 look at verse 45 acts chapter 2 verse 45 let's look together look uh, and no acts 2 verse 45 what does it say it says and they began selling their property and possessions and were sharing them with all as anyone might have have need one as few every believer in this gathering or in this assembly they they contributed they contributed towards the welfare of others one as few 
They sold their possessions. They sold their property. To do what? They sold their property to buy a car? To share. They sold their property and then came and shared with all. So there was a lot of contribution. Everybody contributed. This is koinonia. This is one aspect of fellowship. Hallelujah. Contributing to make sure that all of us are doing fine in life. Hallelujah. Contributing to make sure that everyone in the church is doing well spiritually. Hallelujah. So, when you are in church, you are expected to contribute. Hallelujah. You are not just expected to just sit there and follow. Hallelujah. You are supposed to contribute something. Either in terms of property or in terms of spiritual gifts. Hallelujah. Unaweza toa material ama utumie kipawa chako kubariki wengine. Bwana asifiwe. Kwa hivyo fellowship si fellowship paka watu wanachangia. Hallelujah. Wanachangia katika hali na mali na wanachangia pia kiroho. Bwana asifiwe. We are supposed to contribute for the welfare of others. Hallelujah. That is fellowship. That is one aspect of fellowship. The aspect of sharing. Again, verse 44 to 46. See this church. Verse 44 to 46. And all those who had believed were together and not had all things in common. That is, they shared all things in common. And they began selling their property and positions and were sharing them with all as anyone might have it need day by day continuing with one mind in the temple and breaking bread from house to house they were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart so you see there is a lot of sharing here they had everything in common they shared their thoughts they shared their belief they shared their their destiny you know they were they were walking towards you know serving the lord hallelujah as the writer of hebrews has said you 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 keep together as you serve and, and share waiting for the coming of the lord because we all share one destiny they were one in the mind they were one in 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 their mission in their vision one as if you were so sharing is part and parcel. They broke bread. They shared bread. Hallelujah. And sharing is a very uh, key aspect in fellowship. We are called to share. We are called to share together. To share our possessions. To share things. To have things in common. To have one thing in common as a church. As a gathering. As an assembly. As a local gathering, as a local church, we are called to share. And Paul talked about in First Corinthians, first of all, we share one Lord. Hallelujah. That is Jesus Christ, our Savior. We share one Father, one God, who is the creator of all, and who is the one who gave us salvation through Christ. We share the one Spirit. Hallelujah. We have only one Holy Spirit. Who has distributed every gift to every believer. The source of all the gifts that we have is one. And he, he exists in all of us. Hallelujah. And he is the one who distributed. And he is the one joining us in the earth. Hallelujah. And then we share one faith. We share one destiny. We are heading towards the same direction. Hallelujah. All of us expect to be in heaven together one day. Why do we refuse to share our love? Why do we re refuse to share our emotions, our, our, our problems? Hallelujah. Yet we share one Father, one God. We share one Lord Jesus Christ. We share one Spirit. Why do we refuse to share 
especially love. The aspect of participation in Acts chapter 2, verse 42 to 47. Verse 42 to 47, actually. The whole of it is about participation. When I feel everybody participated. First of all, in verse 42, they were devoting themselves to what? They were devoting themselves to what? One as you Do you think they were devoting themselves by, by just coming to church without a Bible and a notebook? Is that a devotion to the apostles' teaching? When someone is devoted to teaching, how are we likely to see that? They carry with them a notebook to write notes. One as you and not only, you know, notebooks, you know, some of you think that uh, notebooks are just for writing what the pastor says. It's also writing the questions that you, the, you are not clear about what the pastor is saying. You write the questions, you write the questions you are asking yourself as the pastor preaches. When you are devoted to the teaching, you carry a Bible and a notebook when you are coming so that you can participate. One has a few if you don't have a Bible, when, when I want you to participate with me in reading a scripture, how will you do it? When we come to church, you don't just come to church to listen and to follow and to look at the pastor. You come to church and participate. When the pastor is preaching, you actively participate. When I'm preaching, you actively listen. Hallelujah. When I'm teaching, when I'm preaching, you actively engage in the conversation. Hallelujah. Though you may not talk, but in your mind, there are things that you are processing. Hallelujah. So they were devoted. That devotion involves all that. Participation. One as a viewer. And also to the breaking of bread. I told you, the Lord's table is one of the agents of unity in the church. One as a viewer. And when you don't participate... You are affecting the unity somehow. And you abstain every month. You abstain the first three months or the uh, uh, three months in a row. You are affecting the unity of the church. One has fewer. These believers were devoted to the breaking of bread. Hallelujah. They were given to do everything in church together. Hallelujah. If it is listening to the word, learning from the word they were doing together, breaking of bread, to prayer, one as people. Some of you have never seen in prayers, any prayers in this church. When, maybe you are doing your own individual prayers, but what about corporate prayers coming together in one spirit, one as people? When do you do it? You have never attended uh, morning prayers. You have never attended Wednesday prayers. You have never attended home fellowships. When do you join with the rest of the church members in praying together? These believers were devoted. They were participating. Hallelujah. Everyone kept feeling a sense of awe and many wonders and signs were taking place through the apostles. One has a few. Everybody was participating and they saw the hand of God. Hallelujah. They saw the hand of God in the church because there were things God was, was, was doing through the apostles because of the commitment of the believers. Hallelujah. When we commit ourselves, when we participate actively, when we are joined together and are serving God actively and we are glorifying God so much, you will testify, you will witness wonderful things God will do in the church. One as a few. Your love is mine.